What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 1 of the LAN project here in Football Manager 2019. Yes, the start of a brand new series on the channel, a longer term series at that and uh, first things first, no this is not the Pentagon Challenge. That will be coming up in the next month or so, still waiting on a few little bits and pieces to fall into place for that. But in the meantime I wanted to set out on a new unique adventure and that's exactly what we intend to do here in Northern Ireland. It's a country I've never managed in Football Manager in my 20 years playing this game and uh, LAN FC themselves a team with a very very unique backstory a unique situation and I think this is going to be a very interesting save. So a little bit about the club founded in 1889 as you can see here they are currently the only professional full-time football club in the Northern Irish Football League. Now considering that they are in the second division that might seem a little odd but uh, well further backstory uh, last year the club was very much on hard times they were rock bottom of the division and uh, they were struggling financially and uh, well fortunately for them Kenny Bruce a local businessman from Larne uh, decided to purchase the club with the intention of getting the club on its feet and setting it up for long term success uh, so the club bought their stadium uh, which they now own they developed it over the summer and uh, really the plan with the club now is to become a sustainable club in the long term future that really becomes a powerhouse in Northern Irish football while still relying on youth so that's exactly what we're going to do here in this save we're going to have some unique rules uh, first one we can only sign players from Britain and Ireland um, pretty simple uh, what makes this a little more difficult is the fact that after the first summer transfer window we will be limiting our signings to being players only under the age of 19 who are from Britain and Ireland and uh, well an exception will be made for Northern Ireland where we will be able to sign players up to the age of 21 so yes this first summer transfer window is really going to be about trying to lay a foundation for the club getting some more experienced players I will be able to sign players from outside of Britain in this first summer transfer window after that, however, we're going to be out on our own, and I think it's going to be a pretty fun challenge. Uh, the club has a kind of five-year plan called Aspire to Inspire, and uh, as part of this, there is a number of little goals involved in the club, one being, for example, in uh, 2025 to have half the club's first team kind of coming from uh, the youth development side of things in terms of being homegrown at club and through the academy. That is something I'd like to try and do here in seven years' time. Whether or not that's entirely possible remains to be seen. Of course, uh, over the course of this save, we should hopefully get some pretty good young players who we try and sign from everywhere over the British Isles, I guess. And uh, if they're homegrown by the age of 21, they'll be considered one of those young players. And uh, yeah, this is going to be unique, I guess, in the sense that although we're owned by a sugar daddy, we will be given a lot of money uh, and we will be investing most of that into the facilities. Uh, I do want to, at the same time, uh, really have a youth focus. Football Manager this year has its all new training system, the new mentoring system. This is all stuff that I think we can take advantage of here. It's going to be a fun save to see how some of that operates. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a good time, I think. In terms of our first team here, you can see to start the save, we're very limited in terms of our team. We've got a lot of wage budget free, so do expect a fair few signings. Uh, our first team only contains, I think, 11 players right now, which is not ideal, or 13 players. So we've got a starting 11 and two subs, but it would be nice to get it a little bit bigger. In terms of these standout players, we've got Shane Mekalani here. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be rubbish with the names. If you're the first time viewer, I can only apologise. Shane, if you're watching, I apologise profusely. A very, very good player for this level, though. A good centre back. You can see significantly better than our next best centre back. Not consistent, not the best player, but he'd actually be a very, very star player in the league above us. And that's going to be a common trend. In this first season, we're going to be trying to get promoted, I think, fairly comfortably. But at the same time, I would like to give youth a go. Another one of our key players you can see here, Thomas Stewart, 31 years old, experienced at young kind of youth international level. Uh, fairly professional person personality is going to be massive for us in this first summer transfer window. I think I've really got to focus on trying to get in players who have professional personality. Seeing as we're not going to be able to sign older players, it's going to be very much about our current squad. Uh, after the first summer transfer window, passing on their personalities, their experience to the younger players, and hopefully that will naturally, you know, spread throughout the club over the coming years. You know, we're kind of planting the seeds early on. But yes, Thomas Stewart here looks very good. And another player we've got here is Fuad Sul, who's on loan from Barnet only for the first half of the season. So we're probably not going to be able to hold on to him longer term. But uh, while we have him, we're going to make use of him. He looks like a very, very good ball-winning midfielder for this level. 
Anyway, to start things off, I think we'll go forward to the end of preseason. As I said, I intend to add a fair few new players at the squad right now. The majority of these players are new this season, so it's going to be a big new squad to kick things off. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the tactics we're going to be deploying here at Lion FC, and uh, you know about the longer term vision for the club. So anyway, let's go forward, end of preseason, and uh, see what kind of transfer business we've been able to get done. Okay guys, so here we are, August 11th. The start of the season is upon us. We won't be doing the first game of the season today. I'm going to hold off doing that because I think there's so much to talk about in terms of goings on off the club and in terms of my vision for the series and the team that um, I, I want to cover that all sufficiently because I think that's a very important aspect of this save game. So in terms of our team, you can see here I've gone with Shane McElhenney as captain. Very, very excited by this guy at 27 years old. I already identified him as one of our big players. I think he's going to be a pretty commanding centre-back. 10 leadership, 10 determination, not standout. But to be honest, we don't have this natural-born leader in the side just yet. Alongside him for vice-captain, I've decided to go with Jeff Hughes, who is a homegrown kid. Um, you can see here, 10 determination, 9 leadership. 33 years old, former Northern Irish international, started his career at Larn, then went over to Greener Pastures where he went to Lincoln City, my home team, and uh, after that he had a fairly successful career I guess in the Football League, uh, and in the last few years he's played for Tranmere, he has now returned home to the club on a three year contract. And I think his experience is going to be pretty valuable that he offers us, you know, he's a very good player and would be a leading player for the league above us, but at the same time he's not going to be getting any younger. Uh, but regardless, I think as a vice captain, you know, having a homegrown player, someone who's familiar with the club is always a key aspect, and I think he's going to bring that a lot to us. In terms of hot prospects, one of the most exciting players I think we signed this summer was Brandon Oddie. Um, you'll see when we go on to the first team. We've added a number of first team players this year, and indeed players for the under 20s, our development side. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of those players today, because uh, I think that would be a bit overwhelming for you, but we're going to you know, talk about some of the key players, and obviously over the course of the season, I'm sure you'll become familiar with our starting 11 and those players who I'm most excited about going forward. So anyway, we have here Brandon Oddie. You can see A 18 years old, uh, only uh, well recently released. You can see by Crystal Palace. Uh, went to their academy from Norwich's. Didn't get uh, an extension on his contract. He was a free agent. We've picked him up. He's only on two hundred and fifty pounds a week. Um, he's our third best striker behind McDade and Thomas Stewart. McDade, for comparison, you can see here uh, at twenty-seven years old, a very good target man. Oddy um, doesn't really have a standout element to his game, but I feel like that kind of works to his strength. Uh, within our tactical system, he's going to be able to plug, you know, the two different striker roles that we play in our two forward men. And uh, yeah, pretty excited about him in general. So I mentioned how many players we've added to the team. I was not joking. Uh, our first team consists of 28 players. Of course, to start the year, it was only 13. However, um, you'll see a lot of these players here are set to be available for the reserves and will be playing in our under-20s team in the Development League. The Development League, um, you can have five players in the matchday squad over the age of 20. It's um, you know a good opportunity for some of these players to get that first team football opportunities. But the reason I've got them in the first team here is because uh, these younger players, I want them to train with the more experienced players i want them to get their you know personalities improved hopefully through mentoring and uh you know as i said th this is a long-term series and i need to plant the seeds early you can see um i've got my social groups uh, or rather mentoring groups set up like this right now you can kind of see how we've got a few older players pretty much in every position who have fairly professional personality I'm hoping that's going to get passed on to some of these younger players. You can see lots of balanced personality players. So I'm fairly confident that over the course of the season we're going to reap the rewards there. I'll be honest, with the mentoring, I'm not sure if I should be splitting the groups up more or if this is the best way to go about things, but we can tweak it as we go on through the season. Uh, of course, it's a bit of a learning experience, the new training system for me and Football Manager. So anyway, in terms of first-team players who I think are worth talking about today, we have Connor Devlin. He was the captain when I joined the club, which is not entirely surprising because he's got very good determination, but due to his lack of leadership, I decided to strip him of the duty. He didn't kick up too much of a fuss about it. Uh, I like this guy as our first choice goalkeeper. He was one of the few players who the club actually kept on from last season. Uh, you know, prior to their takeover, and uh, I do think he's a very, very good player. Uh, we've got a few other goalkeeping options. I think the most exciting of those is probably Billy O'Brien. At 22 years old, we picked him up as a free agent, the Welsh former under-21 player. You can see he was released by Manchester City, um, spent a year at Macclesfield Town where he failed to make an appearance, 
At 22 years old, I don't expect him to improve a ton, but, um, you know, it's a very good backup goalkeeper. He's certainly someone to be excited about. In the centre-back position, we talked about Shane McElhinney, another player, Maxime Blanchard. Uh, we've picked him up, 31 years old, one of my own signings. Uh, you can see here, personality are fairly professional, very, very good mentals. Obviously, hoping that that kind of experience is going to rub down and uh, be, you know, inherited by some of the players who are younger in the first team squad. He hasn't got the craziest pace, but as you'll see next episode where we talk about our tactical system, we're going to be playing with three centre-backs this year, and as a result, I just need that one fast covering defender. I'm not too worried about our f f kind of wider centre-backs. Uh, I'd much rather they be good in the air, and well, Blanchard definitely ticks off that. Uh, two players I de think definitely worth being excited about are two full-backs. We're going to be playing with a wing-back system. Ben Tilney, already at the club in real life, a very, very good player, this guy. Uh, you can see, looking at his history, he was playing at MK Dons where he was released. He had a few loan spells. Uh, he's now made his way over to Northern Ireland, and I'm very excited about him and his future. And another slightly older English player, we've gone with Elliot Kebe here, who is 23 years old. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, second yellow card's picked up this guy. He's a very good right back, and uh, yeah, I believe he's been playing in his let's play at right back too. So I'm excited to see how this guy gets on. In terms of other key additions, Chris Eagles, what a name this is, uh, a throwback maybe, some of you may remember this guy, uh, was actually at Manchester United. Um, I'll be honest, his career overview here, you can see lots of relegations, not the most convincing or best looking of things, but this guy is a fantastic advanced playmaker. We didn't really have a creative outlet in terms of a centre attacking mid. Um, I'm hoping this guy is going to be the man for us. We've not really got much in the way of strength and depth in this position. Um, but within our system, it's a key, key element, and I think he offers that creativity that we need in abundance. If we just look here at him as an advanced playmaker on attack, not got the craziest pace, but he's very, very good. He's also got fairly professional personality, which is absolutely massive. One of the big kind of tick boxes ticked, and he's going to be very, very good for this level. So anyway, those are a few of the signs we've made. One more we'll go through quickly. Carl Stewart, 21 years old, Watford former youngster, made his senior debut in the FA Cup a couple of years ago, if I'm not mistaken. He looks solid, um, lots of room to improve, and uh, well, with our team, we've signed a lot of players for the future. I think what we'll do is each episode, we might pick out one of these players and have a look at them and talk a bit about their career as um, you know a mini element, I guess, of every episode, because there's quite a few to go through. I don't want to overload you guys with lots of new players, though, today. In terms of how I've been approaching signing players, uh, when I came to the club, I didn't actually have any scouts, which was a little bit of a problem. You can see we've actually bolstered our recruitment team quite significantly, and if we just look at scouts here, we now have four scouts. Um, they're not the greatest scouts, two from England, you can see here their kind of attributes, but um, they've kind of offered us a, a useful way to find players. I am going to be playing with attribute masking on. Um, which is going to be a challenge. That's certainly going to add uh, an element of well, challenge and risk because there's players like this guy, Oliver Gardner, who plays for Cardiff Met Uni, who my scouts love. I've actually currently got a transfer offer in for him, but I can't see any of his tri attributes. Now, we are scouting him. We'll see how he looks. Um, but over the course of the summer, I've very much been relying on trialists, you know, offering players who are free agents trials, and also just, you know, the recommendations of my scouts and agents. Now, the scouting centres proved pretty useful for this all in all, uh, and I'm pretty happy with the signings that we've made just in general, but it has certainly been a challenge. Uh, obviously, with us bringing in lots of scouts, I have also been improving the recruitment team and kind of the coaching team elsewhere. You can see we have some of the best coaches in the league. We have the best physios in the league. Um, we didn't have the biggest backroom staff. That is something that's really kind of shot up. But that has caused a bit of a knock-on effect, and that is the fact that right now we are over our wage budget. So given the fact that we are trying to hopefully become commercially sustainable in line with the club's Aspire to Inspire kind of philosophies and their document, that's going to be a challenge. Um, we're over budget by just shy of uh, £1,500 per week. Um, given the amount of money we've got, that's not the biggest concern. Um, but given that one of the elements of this save that I really want to do is try and hit some of the goals that the club has in real life, that is, you know, something just worth being aware of. Um, just to talk a little bit about this kind of document that I've talked about, because I feel like I've mentioned it once or twice. Essentially, when the club was taken over, there was this document published about the vision for the club going forward um, in terms of there being four major goals. Three of these, I think, we can kind of directly impact in Football Manager. The first of these was to become commercially sustainable by 2021 22. Um, so, as far as I'm concerned, that is keeping a positive cash flow. Um, without you know the reliance on our chairman 
that's going to be a challenge, I think, in three years' time in Football Manager, um, given the fact that you know there is going to be this big focus on youth development. I think that is possible. You know, we may have to sell some of our best hot prospects that we kind of develop as they outgrow the club. Um, but, you know, it's certainly not impossible. That one will be difficult. The other goals, uh, fan acquisition, basically to get more fans through the turnstiles at the start of last year. Uh, the club only had, I think, 50 people turning up to games. You can see the capacity of the stadium, the Inver Park, is uh, 2,000 fans. So we can have a lot of people turning up. In terms of season ticket holders, right now we have 521. Last year, if I'm not mistaken, it was about 50. So the club is definitely on the rise, uh, really trying to establish itself in the community. Obviously, if we can play attractive football, we're going to be able to hit the goal, which I believe for the club is to try and get an average of 1,000 people going to every game. I think that's possible in Football Manager. Obviously, on the pitch success, also going to help with that. The third goal that we can really have an impact with is the youth development thing. I've already talked about it a lot, but we do need to improve our facilities. They're not good enough right now. I did make a request to have them done in the summer when I first joined the club, but I was told to make do with what I've got. We've got lots of money here, though, so I'm pretty confident we're going to be able to you know, improve this. And in terms of the club's longer-term goals, uh, by the end of the 2020-21 season, so in three years' time, 20% um, of the first-team squad they want to have had come through the academy. So in terms of what that means for us, I consider that to be players who are going to be homegrown at club. So you can see right now, in terms of actual starting eleven, we are going to be lacking in that regard in terms of homegrown at club. Uh, without some significant improvements but uh, I talked already about our kind of youth team here you can see I've been setting up all the training really taking this seriously and um, well there's certainly lots of players here who have the potential to become homegrown at the club and hopefully over the course of the next couple of years we're going to see some of these players become familiar household names um, who will obviously be part of that club's longer term future and uh, well beyond the next three years you know by seven years time 2025 the club wants to have 50% of the first team players have come through the academy and homegrown again I'd like to try and aim for that that's not going to be easy but given the stipulations we're under when it comes to our transfers I don't think that's impossible but yeah, they're kind of the main outlines. The fourth one, for people wondering, is kind of community integration. Um, that's something that I know the club are doing a lot off the pitch. I guess we could always set up community service every week with our training uh, as we go full time. But um, obviously, that's something that we're not going to concern ourselves with too much. But I do think that adds an interesting element to the save. And of course, throughout this series, we'll look at more of the kind of goals the club set and how we're getting on in terms of how close we're getting to them. Um, the club has all kinds of targets for silverware, uh, obviously for percentage of youth players uh, in terms of development, developing the stadium facilities as well. That's all part of this club's vision in real life. And it's going to be interesting to see how we can kind of, I guess, attain those goals in Football Manager. But anyway, I think that's a good introduction to the team here. Obviously, next episode, we'll be doing our first game of the season. It's going to be against Knock Breda. Um, I've never managed in Northern Ireland before, so it's going to be pretty exciting. Next episode, we'll talk a little bit about the training, uh, the tactics that we're going to be using here at the club, the attractive football I want to bring to Lan, uh, this beautiful town on the northeast of Northern Ireland. And, uh, well, hopefully I'll see you guys for this one. Uh, so, yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Massive shout out to all my Patreons for your ongoing support. If you have enjoyed this first episode of the series, please do leave a like on it. Obviously, trying out a green screen today behind the curtain, just so you guys know, this isn't a green screen. It's a very odd setup where I have to record videos in the middle of the night, so this won't be a regular thing just yet. However, I am looking in the longer-term future to get a green screen. If you guys want to see more of my face in these kind of videos, I'd be curious to know your thoughts down in the comments anyway that is all from me today guys thank you very much for watching hopefully you're looking forward to this series it's going to be a good one i'm looking forward to it and uh well yeah hopefully i will see you guys in the next one it is me jack and i will talk to you guys in a bit i'm out